guys, I'm Tara with Tara Simon Studios. And I'm Coach Nikki. <laughs> and all her glory, yes she is. And we have a question for you. Can you tell if you sound bad? Well, if you're not sure, we're gonna give you three parameters in which to check and compare your voice to today. The first one is pitch. This to me is like the, the bare minimum of what you've gotta have. If you can't sing a song or a melody on pitch, if you vary and you can't stay on a melodic line, there's work that needs to be done. How to tell if you're on pitch? Well, a really great way to do it is to be singing along with the singer, record yourself while singing, and then listen back while you're quiet and see if your voice matches theirs. Theirs is going to be guaranteed to be correct because they've spent money recording that. Mm. So if yours varies from their pitch, then you know that you are wrong and then you need to determine whether you are flat in the pitch or sharp in the pitch. Flat in the pitch would be underneath the correct pitch and sharp in the pitch would be above, any degree above, the melodic line that the singer is singing. A good way to tell if you're right on it or not is if you hear dissonance when you're singing with the singer. So like in your mind, you feel like, oh yeah, I'm just, I'm singing with her, but I also hear this sound, that's you off. That's yep. what that sound is. And we're gonna give an example of what that's like right now. So Nikki's gonna sing a single note just for ease of hearing right now. So she's gonna sing any note on an ah. I'm gonna sing on pitch first with her in unison. Then I'm gonna go below the pitch and then I'm gonna go above the pitch. So I'm gonna be flat first and then sharp. And then I'm gonna be right up against her pitch, but dissonant to that pitch, okay? I'm gonna call it out. This will be her pitch. I'm gonna go here, here, and then here, okay? Here we go. Uh... You hear, oh, that's so, <laughs> Whoa, nails down a chalkboard. So you hear how that last one can be very deceiving because it's oh so close to the center of the pitch, but it is just still not quite on. Training pitch is an art, it's really difficult, and it, it does require actually a lot of training your ear because that's how we attempt proper pitch. The second one is tone. Mm. Yes, tone is very elusive. Tone, I would say, is even more difficult to classify than pitch because tone is kind of relative. I've re reacted to a ton of people on TikTok whose tone I don't really love. Like, there's this one guy that sounds super nasally when he sings, he's got millions of views, it's like a very specific sound. One would say, oh, that's great tonality. Someone else would say, that guy can't sing. He, he does not have a good voice but it's, it's really based on opinion. So I would say judge tone based on the classic singers, you know, like universally undeniable good singer. You've got the Whitney Houston's, the Mariah Carey's of the world. You've got the Andrea Bocelli's and, and the Michael Jackson's. And, and you may not like that one particular singer's voice, but you know they're undeniably good, okay? They have a good voice, they have good tone. So I'm sure you're thinking, how do you listen to determine if your tone is good or not? I think that you should record yourself. Yeah. And Listen back to it and look for breaks and shakes and inconsistencies in your tone. So don't start and, you know, try and sing a Beyonce song where she's moving all over the place and it's difficult to sing all the words and the runs and the, at tempo. Pick something that's like, you know, Celine Dion, where she's holding it forever and you hold the notes too. And then when you play it back, you see, okay, well, am I holding it? Is it clear and clean? Maybe, maybe if they're not at the Celine Dion level, maybe happy birthday. That's it. Or just one note, you know? Yeah, Nikki likes to swing for the fences. And that's great. Swing for the fences. But also, it's totally okay to do something very familiar. And it's it's good to have other ears to hear to hear what you've recorded as well and get some feedback if that's a safe spot for you. Yes, please be careful with those ears because I have had people who will go and they'll be so excited because they're trying this and then they show somebody who's just a negative Nelly mm -hmm. or that person who's just being honest with them mm -hmm. and it just shoots down their confidence yeah. and they stop. Too many people just stop because they're like, well, it's not good, so why right. should I? So be careful with the person that you're you're showing it to. They must be someone who's gonna be honest with you, but who's also gonna be supportive. Yeah. That's very important. Correct. And just because you don't like your sound in the recording that you're assessing your voice with right now, it doesn't mean that's where your voice stays. So it's not like, oh, I'm bad, throw out the baby with the bathwater and I'm done trying to sing. It's This is more of like, okay, this is where I am and this is where I want to be. Now how do I connect the dots in between? The third determining factor that we see as kind of one of the bigger overarching requirements of singing well is can you stay on tempo? So we've got, can you stay on pitch? What's your tone and can you stay on tempo? If you fall behind or run ahead of a song, 
that is like red flag all over the place to the listener that you either don't have a very trained ear, you're very new at this, you're an amateur, or that there's some other kind of issue going on, like you're not paying attention, you can't hear the music, it's not loud enough. Nevertheless, if it's a problem, it needs to be fixed. And that would be the third thing that you wanna measure your voice against. Can I sing on tempo? So the same way to do that, sing as you did for the pitch test. Sing to someone else singing. It can be a cover of anything you love, Record yourself singing along to that. And are you starting your phrasing and stopping your phrasing with them? Does it match? And even if you decide to hold a note longer, are you remaining in the tempo of the context of that song? Or, or now because you held that note longer, have you fallen behind for your next phrase after that? It's a question that you need to answer for yourself. I just had a session with someone and I've had this several times where you can tell if you have an issue with any of these things or if you don't, do you prefer to just not sing with the track, to just not sing with the music, and you just like to sing acapella because you feel like you just sound better that way? Nine times out of 10, the people that I've run into, when you just like to sing acapella because it sounds better that way, it's because you're not keeping with the tempo, mm. you're not keeping with the pitch, Ouch. and you feel constrained within the song, and so Ooh. you want to do what you want to do, Ooh. so you sing acapella. Ooh. So if you prefer to sing without the track, it might be a red flag that you have an issue with one of these three things we talked about. Oh, oh, that, that hurt my feelings because I am having so many flashbacks of students and I totally forgot about that. Like, and I thought at first it was a good thing. Oh, they sing acapella, that's great. No, 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 no. If you prefer, it's true because you don't have any parameters of accountability there. There is no tempo, there is no pitch because there's no chords and there's no percussion to keep you on the beat and the, and the pitch. So that's actually a really good point. So if you're one of those people and, and all three of these things make sense as far as assessing, but you've gone and done it or you're like, I know for a fact if I go do that, I will not be able to tell, we have an answer for you. Book a 15 minute free assessment with me. Yeah. Let me help you. Let me look at you and get under the hood and figure out what's going on under there. Yeah. And from a professional standpoint, you don't have to then wonder, you know, did I answer these things correctly? And then worst of all, I know I have a problem, but I also now don't know the solution. We do. We're happy to help you. There is no catch. It's free. And we would love you to take advantage of that because that's exactly why we're offering it for your benefit and betterment. We really do want to see your vocal journey move up, level up and improve. It's really what makes us tick. We it makes us so happy. It really is. <laughs> All you need to do to get that 15 minute assessment is click in the description box below or in the pen, pen comments, possibly. There's also a link tree that you can go and click on free 15 minute assessment and book some time with Coach Nikki. We love you guys, we're so proud of you. Let us know what you felt about this video and where you shook out with these three parameters in the comments box below as well. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye guys.